Good morning. My name is James Deitch, and I'd like to talk to you a little bit this morning about uh, the Gilded Age. There was much to do at the end of the American Civil War. The nation was in turmoil. Unlike other uh, wars, the destructive nature of uh, the war in the South was complete. And in the North, uh, much of the means of production necessary for the prosecution of the war lay fallow. The following years would be devoted to rebuilding and redirecting the focus of American industry. The Compromise of 1877, while political in nature, also marked the end of the Reconstruction Era as a distinct period. Uh, it, it also marked the beginning of westward expansion and industrialization. In short, it was, a, it was an exciting time for America. An industrial boom and substantial immigration uh, marked the late 1800s. In fact, during this time, we saw 12 million immigrants arrive in the United States between 1870 and 1900, mostly from Europe, but although a substantial amount of from China. Uh, my own family uh, immigrated at that time from Austria and Germany. Uh, while large-scale immigration created many social tensions, it also created a great vitality throughout the nation, particularly on the East Coast. The newcomers helped transform society and culture, uh, but it created a lot of challenges for the country too, language, literacy, skill sets, all of that. While this evolution had significant socioeconomic implications, uh, that's not really the subject of this discussion. What I wanna focus on is the contributions of individuals that transform industrialization and rapid economic growth throughout the country. Now, during this period, we saw innovations and regulations that provided people with a lot of material conveniences, made life easier, increased productivity, pace of travel, the means of communication became way more efficient. Um, and, and we also saw a modernization of industry with a lot of availability of natural resources through this westward expansion, discovery of new fuel, et cetera. Um, and mechanization and automation of production would follow. So the ownership of as a means of production started to become important and the control of wealth would drive a lot of this expansion and, and industrialization. The Gilded Age was a period of, uh, in American society it marked the end of the, the 19th century. It's characterized by the rapid economic growth that I referred to, as well as conspicuous outer wealth. It, it provided a mask for a lot of the poverty and the inequality and social injustices that were going on. So there's two sides of the story with the Gilded Age, but they're two sides of the same coin. One is the story of the men and women who did the heavy lifting, the immigrant story. It, and it's a great story. It's a fascinating story filled with stories of strength and humility and pride, as well as heartache and sorrow. The other story is uh, of the men and women who realized the American dream by realizing possibility and promise and being able to seize the day, if you will. Out of this period emerged some of the biggest names in American history, the the Carnegies, the Vanderbilts, J.P. Morgan, Rockefeller, Edison, Westinghouse, household names that we still see on products and on buildings uh, throughout our nation. But there was also lesser known people. And I want to talk to you about one of them today. That was Collis Potter Huntington. Uh, Huntington was born in a poor family in Harlington, Connecticut in 1821. Uh, early on, he became a merchant in uh, upstate New York. Um, but in 1849, like a lot of people, he chased the gold rush out to California. Unlike them, he didn't spend a lot of his time sifting through dirt and rock to make his fortune with gold. He was a little smarter, so he smart, partnered with a guy named Mark Hopkins. Together, they became outfitters, and they sold to all these miners that were out there and uh, realized that was a, a sustained source of income that was more sure than trying to find gold uh, nuggets in, in the creek beds. Um, while most of the miners wound up broke, Huntington became a wealthy man, started amassing a large fortune. And um, at that same time, and even prior to the Civil War, he had already started thinking about westward expansion and, and what rail systems might be. So he initially started off by creating toll roads uh, to accumulate wealth as people moved westward. And then, of course, by procuring that land, it was a mechanism to go ahead and, and have the land to build the railroads, which he played a big part in Central Pacific Railroad in 1861, 1865, we saw the Standard Pacific Railroad. Um, 
but he was also involved in a lot of political lobbying and quite frankly, bribing of politicians. And he became known for that and represented the greed and corruption of the railroad industry. In 1869, he completed that link to the West, 4,000 miles from San Francisco all the way to Newport News, Virginia, which he basically founded and created a lot of wealth, including the Pacific Mail uh, Steamship Company, started building ships as part of Roosevelt's Great White Fleet. Uh, tremendous story, and, and, and I would encourage you to learn more about people like this uh, that contributed so much and are behind a lot of that wealth. Huntington died in, in uh, August of 1900 with a net worth of about $50 million. He had a charitable size side of him. He donated a lot of his wealth to institutions in California, Virginia, as well as his mansion in New York to Yale University. He's one of the most influential uh, men in American history, and he's the story of a poor boy growing up and achieving the American dream. I hope you enjoyed this presentation. I look forward to discussion on it. Thank you.